Well, Alexandra, this is where we are now. We got to take our turn uh, the night before we left to come here. It was a long drive. We had a flat on the way, but some nice, nice man who um, we assume his name was Gary got a screw out of the tire. Um, but what you want to know about, since you're in charge now while we are in this um, northern paradise, uh, is what did we do at the end of our turn, or on our turn? Well, we did some silver backing um, to try out a new rule that Phil allowed, Phil Eklund allowed, in the middle of our game. So this is a, a rule that's never been used in the game before, which was kind of fun to be able to try it out. Um, and that was uh, to Sabine Raid just by being outside of someone's metropolis. And so we did that to, to take a bunch of cards. We we totally shot our, our innovation track. Um, and this is a thing I just kind of did. I, I was out of time. I didn't really have time to consult with any of the cards or anything. I just kind of did it uh, to leave you a mess to clean up and see what you dealt, dealt with it. I know how I would probably, if I were playing, want to continue with it. Just maybe to do it again. Try and go into chaos in uh, era 3 maybe. And get into era 3. Because you could jump into era 2 and go into chaos within like two two turns and be in era 3. Pretty not too hard. Um, if my calculations are correct in my fuzzy memory. Um... But, so, did some Sabine raids outside Metropoli, got three cards, so we could maybe get our, depending on what you decide to do, we could maybe get our innovation track back. Or, you know, maybe you'll domesticate things. I wonder what you'll do while I'm out here enjoying this landscape. Hey Alexandra, giraffe made it to the top of this mountain here. Um, pretty much the top, there's a little bit more top up there. But she's on top of the mount, um, giraffe, queen of mounds, giraffe makes the mound shake. She's the queen of that mountain over there. She's the queen of all mountains. All of them. Well, Alexandra, I'm back from my camping trip and you never got a chance to take a turn. Um, and in some ways, a lot has happened in the game and out of the game. In some ways, nothing has happened at all. Hi. Hi, Alexandra. Um, so, you never got to take a turn, but apparently Wolf caused another huge climate change and now the desertification and all this stuff. Really, you know, it, during the regular work week, this would be really hard on me and um, really difficult for me to take emotionally the loss of so many units. Um, I think Flush's city also got covered in sand. Um, but I'm on vacation, so it's not a huge deal. And it seemed like there was a, a lot of blood even before that. Um, what, is, what is kind of sad, and this too also, I'm not really feeling in my heart, maybe because I'm not in the, the regular work routine, which this game is kind of a part of. Um, is the loss of Pegasus. I, uh, I, you know, I think you should, there, there should be a clip in there of um, Giraffe on a mountain and she's wearing one of these things right here with a card in it. Um, on our way to the campsite, there we stopped at this small, um, small town grocery store and um, right when we got inside there was this, this young girl, I would say she's probably a girl, I don't think she was a woman yet, um, with a tiara and a sash and this lady who was standing next to her talking to some kids saying, would you like to meet the queen? I was like, yes, we'd like to make a, meet the queen and we'd like to get a photo op. And so I went out to the car to get this with Pegasus in it so that Nellie could wear that in the photo op with the queen of this, this town. And um, when I got back, the queen was gone and Nellie was somewhere else and she didn't know where the queen went. And so the, the point of that is in, the, in that process, Pegasus got separated from the others. I remember her getting back into the car, uh, getting back in the car with her. But then when I went back, I just found this, the, the plastic headband without the card 
of Pegasus. So I actually, not only is she stolen away from us by the Hobbit Lord, Mim, Mim but the card is actually gone. Um, she could turn up somewhere, but I think it's kind of fitting that she's missing. And again, I don't, I feel a sort of lost, but it's kind of abstract at this point. I don't feel super sad. Um, maybe because I, she was already taken and I kind of already grieved once. It's kind of hard to grieve twice for someone who's still gone. Here you can see the damage that was done. We actually didn't lose too much from the desertification. We lost um, the town that would have been called Mound if we had ever been able to speak. Um, other than that, which, which as I've said, for those of you who maybe have follow, been following this, or if you recall Alexandra, I tend to lose, I tend to, to get a town here and then I tend to lose it. So that's, it's like a, there's a repetition in my memory of that, which is comforting in a way. I'm glad that happened. Um, or maybe I'm just, tr I'm just being optimistic. But a lot of other people lost things as well, except for the possessive man, Jonathan Bolton. Other big news. Um, USR Local moved to racism, which I think is kind of fitting in a way. Uh, he's, he's definitely um, playing the part of the man in this game. He's um, not so much you know, being overtly aggressive, but creating these, these sort of deals, making these deals like the man might that um, maybe at face value don't seem like they're damaging, actually are because by... Um, creating these sort of cartels, there, there are people who are, um, who are locked out of that and the cartels are ultimately influenced and manipulated by the person who's pulling the strings, which I think in this case is um, this, this racist funky lord here and his elephant. Um, which again, I should say when I'm saying these comments, especially, uh, you know, my last video was maybe a little dramatic. Uh, maudlin was kind of what I was going for. I don't mean these about the players. This is just um, in this world here. It's surmising. It's taking events from this world and um, thinking about humanity uh, through these different roles. Everyone else who's playing, I think, is just playing a game. I don't really think there's... I don't think USR locals thinking about it, things in the terms that I'm putting them in, but it's still interesting um, how these, especially considering that, how um, these elements of humanity come out through play, which is these different building blocks that have kind of been um, studied and researched, like uh, racism being there where it is. You know, we can draw connections from these dots, which are, which are fun to think about. So Pablo had said that um, we perhaps could be communicating, Alexander, and I'd definitely like to communicate with you now. I don't have Pegasus to talk to, and so it's difficult. And the other people are still packed away. I haven't unpacked yet. I wanted to get uh, my turn done. Except for, I guess, Giraffe is out. But Giraffe is gone, so I can't even talk to her right now in the current model. Things are going to be changing soon, um, at least in terms of how this is all set up. I can feel it. Uh, but until then, until I've had time to change it, or until it feels like exactly the right time to change it, which maybe it's past time, I don't know, um, I have to go with what I have. So who do we have? We have Flush on the board, we have Little Red on the board, and we have Pegasus, and we have Cowboy. Um, Pegasus, I, I don't know what to make of these, these little horses here. Um, I've lost, I mean, the card Pegasus isn't even, I don't even have it with me. Um, I need to get the other cards out. That's just all there is to it. Now, where did I put them? I put them in this box here. So I was going to do a series with my wife, but Vacation changed, um, called Inno Vacation, where we had these guys play. Let's see, he's in the future. Future He's here. All right. So here. So we just have three to talk to. Um, it's kind of two big choices that I can think of. And I'd love to consult with you about this again, but it's going to be difficult. I wonder if you'd be interested in, in doing a forum uh, where we can just kind of be musing over time since, you know, the, the, that we would be, that I'd be available to play at the same time you'd be available to type about it um, is unusual. So. Last time we did something with silverbacking, and we could do that again. 
We could do silver backing and play a bunch of cards for fecundity decreases in order to not go into chaos for sure. Um, that's kind of like treading water, but then we'd at least have some population actions, which I don't, I don't know what we would do with that. Uh, but but maybe that would be interesting because if we silver backed and then did some fecundity decreases, we'd still be down here, so we'd have more innovation actions next time, and we could still do um, some of the other sorts of the, the sabbing raids that we're we're having fun with. So what would we be able to sabbing raid? The swine herd? That's not that exciting. Copper battle axe is a little more exciting. That might be fun. So that's one choice. Another choice is we could take this ard plow. That's rather tempting. Um, then as a card play, we could grab us an elder and then immediately um, use that elder to try and domesticate maize beans. Now we wouldn't get a metropolis out of that because that's desert, but we'd still be able to do the domestication. So those are the two choices we have to make, um, whether we're going to silverback or whether we are going to domesticate. And it's a really tough choice. I mean, I think the domestication one is, is definitely the more like do it now good in the short term, but it's got a die roll on it and we've been so bad with those die rolls. I was kind of hoping while I was on vacation you would just take care of the whole domestication issue for me so I wouldn't have to worry about that. A sim similar thing happened for Wolf. He let me roll the dice for him one time and he got the thing that he had been desperately trying to domesticate. So I was hoping you know, I wouldn't have to deal with the stress of the of the um, plant domestication and trying to get to footprint three, but it seems like it's still before us, and it's like it's a it's sort of case of pouring good money after bad. Um, we've already made that. We've already invested so many attempts into this. Can we just walk away, or do we have to keep pulling the slot, pulling the slot, pulling the slot? I gotta talk to someone. And the fact that we're on vacation and that this Coconut Palm Island opened up, it's an ice age again. I didn't mention that because it didn't really do anything super severe. Um, but it did open up this Coconut Palm Island, which gives a double plus on the roll here. So, you know, if, if we're thinking about, we were able to move there. So if we're thinking about um, continuing our quest to move our footprint up one space, spent a lot of turns on that. Um, that's a good place to go rather than just leaving it to the die roll. We can go there and change our, our chance to five and six, I think. Um, yeah, because if we rolled a one, that's the bad roll because that would give us nuts again. But two or higher, and we would, well, no, two would also give us nuts. Yeah, it's three or higher, which is still better. Still better because otherwise um, we we could potentially get low protein fruit and that wouldn't move our footprint up at all. Um, so we did that. Uh, we kind of not quite treaded water. We got it so that um, we got to take two cards, which will be helpful, and then we'll have two innovation actions unless something horrible happens to use on our next turn. It kind of became easier now that Pegasus is gone because we don't really have to. I mean, we feel like she's lost to us. We don't have to feel like we have to rescue her so much. So we didn't we didn't have to do any of the um, the war warlike stuff. Even though Alexandra's last message was, "There will be war."